They say every day is for the thief, one day for the owner of the house. But ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, has reversed the role. It is now every day for the owner of the house. If you're involved in bribery, over-invoicing, or any shady deal, the day of reckoning has come. ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, is watching you. If you're reported for any corrupt practice, you'll be investigated, prosecuted, and punished. Corruption is harmful to our nation. Join the campaign against it by reporting any corrupt practice to ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Let me join hands with ICPC, make up the time. Break the chain of corruption now. Don't give, don't take. This message is brought to you by ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Good day, viewers. Thank you for joining us on Corruption Must Go, ICPC's weekly television program. I am your host, Muruna Barnabas Atiai. On the program today, we shall be serving you a menu that consists of the following looking at religious leaders in terms of the influence they wield and how they can use such influence to contribute positively to reading Nigeria of menace of corruption, bringing you up to date on happenings in the world of anti-corruption, a short didactic drama piece and more. However, first let's join Ruth Awadi for anti-corruption stories. Corruption not in my country. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, madam. Uh, my name is Alera. I am not sick. I just need you to help put your stamp on this medical report. I, I want to tender it at my office as a sick leave. I'll pay 10,000 naira. Uh, Ma'am, that is impersonation. I'm not a doctor. Oga. Be like say this English, no copy. I go increase the money to twenty thousand naira. Eh, I beg. You know, eh? If I give you that twenty thousand, as you as you wide, so eh? You know, if it still help your condition more, so <laughs> you don't say you spread well. Uh, as, as I spread like virus, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 if person come to your hospital, talk to make you give a fake medical report, make you go take cholesterol leave. Talk and say no, not like corruption. Not in my country! Stop corruption now! Corruption not in my country! Welcome to this segment on anti-corruption stories. I am Ruth Awudi. A federal high court in Abuja has granted permission to ICPC to freeze various sums of money in bank accounts traced to the immediate past governor of Zamfara State, Abdulaziz Abubakar Yari. Justice Taiwo Taiwo gave the permission when he ruled on an ex parte motion filed by ICPC ordering that all the accounts containing $669,000 and 24.3 million naira domiciled with Polaris and Zenith banks respectively be frozen. These sums are funds allegedly stashed in the personal accounts of the former governor and companies belonging to him which include Kayatawa Nigeria Limited and BT Oil and Gas Nigeria Limited. A breakdown shows that the sum of 12.9 million naira was stashed in the former governor's Zenith bank account 11.1 million naira found in a Zenith bank account operated by Kaya Tower and 217,000 naira also in Zenith Bank belonging to BT Oil and Gas Nigeria Limited. $56,000 was discovered in the former governor's Polaris bank account. Another $301,000 was kept in Kaya Tower's Zenith bank account while $311,000 was found in BT Oil and Gas Zenith Bank account. ICPC had approached the court through section 48 subsection 1, 2 and 3 A and B of the Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Act 2000 praying for an order of interim forfeiture of the alleged funds to the federal government. All the sums are alleged to have been proceeds of corruption emanating from 
the illegal activities of the governor and his representatives. In another development, the chairman of ICPC, Professor Bolaji Owasoye, has charged the staff and management of the Petroleum Equalization Fund Management Board, PEF, to always exhibit high levels of transparency, accountability, professionalism, and discipline in all their undertakings. Professor Owasoye, represented by Mr. Ayegbayo Olayinka of Corruption Monitoring and Evaluation Department of ICPC, gave the charge during the inauguration of the new members of the Anti-Corruption and Transparency Unit Act 2 of the agency. The chairman noted that PEF played a vital role in the nation's economy and that its core mandate of ensuring uniformity in the pricing of petroleum products through bridging of costs to product distributors nationwide could be achieved effectively in an environment of transparency and accountability. This is particularly commendable because your organization plays a vital role in the nation's economy, particularly in its core mandate of ensuring uniformity in the pricing of petroleum products through bridging of costs to product distributors nationwide thereby making it important for members of the staff of this organization to always exhibit high levels of professionalism, discipline, transparency, and accountability in all their undertakings. This onerous task can best be achieved when the members of staff understand their responsibilities to live above board in order to propel the organization forward. In his remarks at the event, the Executive Secretary, PEF, Ahmed A. Boboy, gladly revealed that PEF over the years had expeditiously complied with the directive of the federal government on the establishment of ACTU and this inauguration was a commitment of the fund's desire to create a transparent and accountable environment. To demonstrate our zeal in fighting corruption, the board had mobilized and sponsored numerous staff to several trainings organized by the Anti-Corruption Academy of Nigeria, ACAN. The training institution of the ICPC and other anti-corruption trainings organized by other institutions. We are very proud to inform you that two of our staff, Ibrahim Sali Sukanya and Abdullahi Aladi Auta, were amongst the pioneer graduates of ACAN who acquired a graduate certificate in corruption prevention. He noted that the relationship between PEF and ICPC had remained very cordial and said he looked forward to more of such a relationship in the years ahead, while affirming his support for the Act 2 to carry out its duties without interference from the management. That will be all on this segment. Corruption Must Go continues with Muna. Stay with us. If you're just joining us, this is Corruption Must Go. Nigeria, in spite of concerted efforts by ICPC and other anti-corruption agencies, is sadly renowned for significant levels of corruption. However, the country is far from being alone. In effect, Nigeria, like many other countries, is having to grapple with the scourge of corruption. It needs to be pointed out at this juncture that official corruption does not just occur. It's perpetrated by humans who have been given positions of thrust but prefer to abuse such for their personal gain. And sadly, many of them belong to one religious group or another where they come under the tutelage and guidance of charismatic leaders. Considering religion's moral mandate and its mission in the public square to defend the powerless and the oppressed, have religious leaders been taking this moral responsibility lightly? Have religious leaders who have thousands of worshippers who look up to them for moral guidance been able to take a stand against corruption? We spoke to a cross-section of them who shared their views with us. Many people do not know that these roads that are not repaired, these schools that are dilapidated, 
these hospitals that have become like mortuaries, that it is on account of corruption that we are not able to get these institutions functions, functioning properly. That it is on, on account of corruption that we don't have resources to channel to make sure that the roads are working well, to make sure that the universities, federal universities are well funded. So when we take them through the cost, what corruption is costing the country, we have many people who weep. So when you then get religious leaders to understand this and to be emotionally engaged in this, then they can go back and you can be sure that they can be hammering on it in their churches. Finally, I mentioned earlier, one of the things we want to help them to do is let them be accountable themselves in their churches, in their mosques. Let them be models of accountability where the little monies they collect in their village church, that they keep the account properly. They keep the account properly and make it open, declare the account to their members. The money collected in the churches, for example, I mean, I, I come from Catholic church and the money doesn't belong to the priest. <coughs> You don't have millionaire priests simply because it's in a big church. Uh -huh. So let them declare what they get. Let them have structures because what happened with some of our, with this our churches is that, well, of course, if the thing is, belongs to the man and his wife and his children. But let the people ask to have structure because it's the money of the people. Let them have some structures of accountability. Let there be budgets. Let there be monthly account. Then the people can now raise questions when they see the monthly account. So we train them to go back and institute some structure for financial accountability in their, in their churches. Definitely we all agree that mosques and churches, the imams and the pastors, they, are, they occupy a critical place in this fight against corruption because the true religions condemn corruption. Uh, to be religious is to be righteous. If we are really religious, we will be righteous. To constantly tell the people that this corruption in Nigeria is it shows our hypocrisy. We cannot say you are religious while you are so corrupt. So religious leaders can do a lot themselves within their spheres of influence and then they can use the principles of the religions to fight corruption in the society. Religious leaders, church and mosque what the leadership can do to contribute in fighting corruption in Nigeria is by taking the you know the corruption and integrity education down to the grassroots especially let me come to the church we can use seminars we can use conferences we can use interaction or dialogue especially we can organize program for the members in general we can also organize program for the pastors and also for the leadership in fact i want to say if at all the church will understand the dangers and what corruption has caused in nigeria in fact it means we are doing nothing we are, we are part of the society and we are, we are even working with about 99% of the society and we, they need to understand that this thing can take us to hell. Although the primary business of religious communities, especially that of religious leaders, seems removed from the nuts and bolts of public procurement processes, proper contract oversight and the code of conduct for civil servants, the power and influence of such religious leaders is real. The questions therefore are, how can religious leaders contribute to reading Nigeria of corruption? And how can religious leaders come together with the private and public sectors as well as civil society organizations in the struggle to win the fight against corruption? We spoke to some religious leaders. Religious leaders has a lot to do in terms of eradicating corruption in Nigeria, but first of all, in the religious point of view, what is corruption? Um, in the religious point of view, anything that we are doing that is wrong, and we are doing it knowingly it's wrong and continue doing that thing, we are being involved in corrupt practices. Furthermore, when you try to change any beneficial situation, or any situation that is good, to a situation that has become harmful, it's also corrupt practices. You know, causing disorder in any society, in any format, 
they are all corrupt practices. And Islam actually does not approve such corrupt practices in any ramification. Mm -hmm. Now, coming to what can religious leaders do or support in government uh, effort in eradication, eradicating corruption in Nigeria, um, have a lot that have been done by um, Islamic uh, religious leaders. Firstly, I'm focusing on the Islamic aspect, the Imams, when you say religious leaders, we are thinking of the Imams and the scholars and preachers. They have a lot to do. One of the things they can do majorly is mobilizing their followers to fight against corrupt practices in any form. There's a verse of the Holy Quran that instructed, uh, give us that um, instruction. We Allah said, um, this is the meaning that they should arise among you a group of people inviting all to good and joining what is right and forbidding what is wrong they are uh, those are going to post uh, now enjoying what is right forbidding what is wrong as i said doing something that's wrong and it is wrong we are doing it is corrupt practices. So forbidding that wrong thing, forbidding such corrupt practices is a great you know, uh, thing to fighting corruption. And you know the religious leader will have a lot of followership. We have an institution in the mosque, our mosque and what have you. We use this uh, mosque to preach against this corrupt, any corrupt practices in society. Cutting across individual, family level, societal and the general uh, level. Um, that's one of the ways that we can, you know, religious leaders are helping in uh, fighting corrupt practices. Most importantly, we have different strategy in fighting corruption. For the religious leaders, ours is preventive measure. We prevent. So we don't even want to wait it to occur before uh, correcting. Our own is preventive um, uh, measures in fighting uh, corruption in all its ramifications. What we are doing, we are collaborating for sustainability. Because anything we are doing, we want to be sustained. You know, for us in Al Habi Islamic Society Abuja, we are currently collaborating since 2018, working with about 50 Islamic organizations in six states of Nigeria um, uh, Abuja, Kaduna State, Kibi State, uh, Kogi State, Oshun, and Lagos State. We have some Islamic scholars there that we are working, collaborating with them. What are we doing with them? We are trying to strengthen their capacity to be able to speak against corrupt practices publicly in the mosque or in any other public place. We need to act and speak against corrupt practices. And also giving them enough information about empowerment because we cannot fight corruption if you're not financially empowered. If you're not educationally empowered, we are trying to give them you know, um, education information on how to be financially independent and linking them to a source of getting income so that they can sell some investments so that at the end of it all they will be financially independent that they can speak yeah. because when you want to speak and uh, about corporates and you are not financially okay you know there are a lot of challenges in the society mm -hmm. so that's what we are doing currently and we're hoping to continue and then expand the collaboration with other Islamic organizations not only Islamic organizations we also working with other Christian organizations like Lokstera Abuja here, another Christian organization. We are working, collaborating together so that we make sure uh, we give our own contributions to the education of corruption in Nigeria. Thank you. The challenges we are having in our society concerning our religious scholars are they, some of our religious lack requisite insights and understanding of the ills of society. We are also enjoying with the anti-corruption agents to also have a time for them, create an avenue to enlighten all our scholars because they lack requisite insight and understanding of the aids of corruption. Those among them that have the exposure and have the understanding of your corruption, they are also faced with, they are also lack the requisite uh, piety and tegwa. Tegwa means uh, having a God consciousness. They lack a requisite God consciousness to turn away from evil. These are the challenges. To so we, the anti-communities, are 
and join also to get an avenue for these little scholars to train them, educate them, and they are moving as they are corruption because they are the significant role to play in our society. Or money laundering. But for us who are Christians, corruption is the issue of the heart. It's an issue that comes from the heart of man. And until the heart is changed, there's nothing you can do to curtail the issue of corruption. And that's why as Christians, as a minister of the gospel, my major responsibility is to make sure that the hearts of men and women are changed. And that is done by the power of the Holy Spirit. When we are able to change the hearts of men, or when God is, changes the hearts of men and women, corruption will be reduced in our society. What I do to try to make sure that the hearts of men are changed, one, the obvious one is preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God. And in addition to that, we add to what we call Bible study, trying to understand the mind of God on how we should conduct ourselves, not only as individual, but in relation to our calling, that is our vocation, uh, also our relationship with society. Teaching men and women to live holy lives, righteous life, because God himself says, be holy for I am holy. And so we have to teach our members to live like God in holiness and righteousness. And sometimes we do that by organizing a revival service. It's not like the revival service when you are looking for money. This is when you are seeking God's help to transform the lives of people so that they can live justly, they can live holy lives, they can live uh, in, in, in a way that they are able to build others. And to take away the principle, I mean the devil that I call greed, one of the major problems in our society is the issue of greed. And until that is taken out of the minds of people, the issue of corruption will become something that we'll just be talking about without any positive effect. And so my, I will talk for myself, my church, is something that we don't tolerate. We make as much effort as we can to live holy lives within our own families and within our own context, that is our own larger society. Even in the vocation we engage in, like businesses, like all other kind of works, we make sure that we portray the life of Christ in us. Welcome, sir. Hello. Um, I need a room. You see? I need a room. Hi. I can we look everywhere. Again. All of them don't be there. Well, of all my toiling around, I need a room to rest my head. Mm, all the rooms are booked, sir. Well, oh, okay. okay. What's going on here? Nothing. Nothing. But I heard you say to that man that there are no more rooms. Eh, hey, madam, no more rooms, ma. But we still have two rooms left. Madam, now so we're going to donate two rooms anyhow. Eh? No, we'll get one we we'll use do PP for our pocket. Are we not in business? Madam, now our business is This is corruption! Stop corruption now! Corruption not in my country. There is a compelling need for religious leaders to speak and also be seen to take a stand against corruption. They must help their followers exhibit a high sense of integrity in all their dealings and adopt zero tolerance for corruption while sustaining efforts needed to yield results. That's our package on this week's edition. Remember to act and speak out against every form of corruption. You can reach us on our toll-free numbers showing on your screen. 
Also follow us on Twitter at ICPC underscore PE and on other social media platforms. Simply search for ICPC Nigeria and like our page. Thank you for watching and bye for now.